Hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. Daniel. Hey, Mr. Daniel. Let me remind everybody over the weekend to be careful. Remember, you only get one life, and you don't get any refunds. This is your one shot at greatness, at mediocrity, or at failure. Whatever it is you strive to achieve, this is it. When your bell has tolled, to steal a phrase from John Dunn, and you find yourself at the pearly gates, do not go to St. Peter and say, Pete, dude, cut me some slack. I've got to go back. There's so much more Latin I want to learn. Because he will say, tough. You only get one life, and you don't get any refunds. And you will say, deja vu, dude. And he'll say, go on in. Or he'll say, get in the elevator and push the D button. This is it. Unless, of course, you're Hindu, in which case you will be reincarnated, but you're always reincarnated as a dung beetle or a slug, and folks, hey, dung, dung beetles, beetles don't, don't learn Latin. Latin! You are also at an age in which you are getting some freedom. And with freedom comes responsibility. That means you're responsible for the decisions and choices that you choose to make. Therefore, pay attention to whom you are hanging around. Whatever they are into, they are probably going to drag you into it as well. Make sure that you do not get yourself into anything you cannot get yourself out of. And if you feel uncomfortable doing something, it is probably a pretty good sign you should not be doing it in the first place. Any problems that you have are real. Do not let people dismiss them as teenage trivialities. Should a problem become too overwhelming for you, my advice is to go to your parents. You would be amazed at how concerned they are for your well-being. If, however, you have parents that could care less, and in this day and age, absolutely nothing surprises me. If that is your situation, number one, I am sorry. Number two, there is still someone out there who has a vested interest in you and who would be willing to help you. Be it a friend, the parents of a friend, a next door neighbor, an aunt, an uncle, a relative. There is someone out there who is willing to talk with you and to listen to you. Do not do as my wife's first cousin did. At the age of 19, he put a bullet through his head and he is forever 19, six feet in the ground, in a box, decomposing. And folks, when I think of 19, that's when life just begins. You graduate from high school. You've gone off to college. You meet that special someone. You fall in love. Uh, and, and you, you graduate, graduate from, from college. college. Then you get a job. And you work for a little bit. Then you get married. Then you work a little bit more. And then you have my permission. And my blessing. And to start your family. <laughs> And folks, duh, duh it's done in that order. And that way is the easy way. And that way is hard enough as it is. And that way is hard enough as it is. Ladies, as awkward and as uncomfortable as it is to talk about, rape is a reality in our society. And it's usually not from a stranger jumping out from behind a bush, a swan descending from the sky, a golden shower, or a really nice smelling bowl in a pasture. It's usually from somebody whom you thought you could trust. Therefore, use some common sense and discretion. Think before you get into a car and go somewhere with somebody. Think before you get out of a car. Always pay attention to what's going on around you. Gentlemen, on dates, you are expected to be gentlemen. Just because a young lady agrees to go out with you does not mean she owes you anything except her company for the evening. When you go to pick up your date, do not pull into the driveway and leave your car running and roll down the window and shout, Get on out here! I'm a eating gas! Turn the car off, go up to the front door, and ring the doorbell. Introduce yourself to her parents. Or if you already know them, fine. Either way, you take five minutes. You tell them where you are taking their princess, what you will be doing for the evening, and when you will have her home. And by all means, you live up to that. You would be amazed in those five minutes how much your parents will appreciate it and how much they will respect you for it. And whether they're willing to admit it or not, the young ladies in here will respect you for it and appreciate it as well. It might sound old-fashioned, but the very first thing you do is tell the young lady how nice she looks. She'll have spent a lot of time getting ready just for you. You also open the door for her, you open the car door for her, you pull out her chair in the restaurant, making sure, of course, you push it back in after she sits down, and you pay for the meal. Which means you order first. You order from the top to the middle part of the menu. Do not order the water and crouton special, lest your date feel that she can only order the water or crouton special. And ladies, should your date order from the middle part of the menu, do not take it upon yourself to think, oh, he'll have so much money for me, I will have the servant turf. Because now he might have to have the water and crouton special. Guys, 
and you ladies in here will concur with me on this. We know you're great and that the sun rises and sets because of you. We know that if you're not here on Monday, that the sun will stop shining and the birds will indeed stop singing. We know that and we appreciate that. But these young ladies in here are people too. They have hopes, dreams, aspirations, plans, goals, the same as you do. Ask them some questions and listen to their responses. You would be amazed at how intelligent and multifaceted they are. I know they're tired of having to sit there and look pretty and smile at everything we've got to say. Include them in the conversation. The number one complaint of married women is that their husbands don't talk with them and listen to them. And that, folks, is sad. And ladies, on dates, you are expected to be ladies. If any of you are at a party over the weekend and things get out of control, my advice is to leave. Don't hang around and think, I wonder what the cops will do when they show up. <laughs> no matter how innocent and pristine you know you are, the cops don't know you from Adam's house cat and they will haul you off as well. So, if you are at a party and things go awry, you split. Put on your roller skates, your roller blades, your surfboard, your little red wagon, your pogo stick, your unicycle, your tricycle, your bicycle. Bum a ride with a friend. Get in your purple gremlin with curb fillers, whatever it takes. You leave. I do not want to see anyone's name in the police blotter this weekend. I do not want to see anyone's name in the obituaries. And I do not want a yearbook dedicated to you. Life is fragile and ephemeral, and you need to treat it as such. And even if you are not excited to be in here on Monday, I'm excited to see all of you in here on Monday. We did it! <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Daniel. I'm so happy to have had you as a teacher and to have experienced what can only be described as the most unique, interesting, and somewhat perverted class I've ever taken. To this day, I consistently impress people with my Latin knowledge and tell stories about my awesome Latin teacher. Much to your dismay, I intend to continue to corrupt your sweet and innocent Princess Maggie with my presence. So hopefully I'll be seeing you soon. Bona Fortuna in your retirement. Quick word of thanks. Thanks, Mr. Daniel, for making four years of my high school career amazing and Latin fun filled. I had some of the best times at JCL conventions and the National JCL convention. You've definitely made a Latin nerd for life out of me. Happy retirement. Hey, Mr. D, I heard you're retiring. and I just want to wish you good luck and say that I'm really, really grateful for your teaching all through high school and um, for my older brothers as well. You're kind of a staple of the school. So um, thinking about West Joanne without you in that corner of the 200 building um, is really sad and confusing for me. And I know that no teacher will ever live up to that classroom and I don't know how they're going to get all the Latin projects off the walls <laughs> or the ceiling. And um, I really uh, <laughs> loved being in your class. And I regularly think of things I can do for my own students and um, uh, that, that you did for us. And I really appreciate that. Um, you're definitely one that I look back to as the best teachers that I had and so when people ask me like what does a good teacher look like what are good strategies that good teachers use I say things like they sing songs to us <laughs> and they make up little silly doodads that make no sense <laughs> to help us remember to like you know conjugate and and behave on the weekends so I appreciate that and I know that um, everyone else does as well that had your class even people that didn't have your class they <laughs> freaking loved you so congratulations on a long career of success hi this is mark sheriff class of 1998 and i just wanted to say thank you so much to mr d for everything that you've taught me yes for teaching me latin but also for teaching me what it means to be a great teacher the things that you did to motivate students Everything from the, going to JCL to all of the Kirtaman practices to the banquet at the end of the year, all those special things that you did, those are things that I try to emulate in my own teaching career to get students enthusiastic and excited about the subject that I teach. So thank you so much for that. Best of luck in your retirement, and 
Thanks again for the loan of the pants in Rome, but I really hope you're not showing that picture now, what, 20 years later?